You can always find a reason to not do what you don't want to do. Hey guys, it's me again, Douglas, and today I want to talk to you guys about not making excuses, right? Especially especially not making excuses to get out of what God has called you to do. Because honestly, we're like, we're really, really good at, at making excuses. Like we can get really creative sometimes. There's like a million possible excuses to not do what you don't want to do. You know, there's this one time where there was like this windstorm that kind of blew in through our town and, and it made a big mess because it, it was like there was lots of trash everywhere. And at my school, like the playground has like this tall kind of chain link fence. And so lots of garbage kind of came into like the, the playground area at my school and then it got stuck there. So the wind blew it in, but the wind couldn't blow it out. And so it was it was a it was a big mess. There was all sorts of paper, just lots of garbage. And at the end of, of the school day, one day, the day after this big windstorm, they were asking for volunteers to come back in the evening and help pick up garbage in the in the playground area. And, you know, spending the evening picking up garbage does not sound like very much fun to me. So when the lady at the door asked me if, you know, me and my family might want to come clean up garbage, I, I told her that that I had to I had to clean my room. And it's true, I did. My mom told me I had to clean my room because I had put it off for kind of a long time. And she said I had to clean my room that day. And, you know, I was kind of dreading cleaning my room, but uh, at that moment I was like, oh, good, I'm so glad that I have something that I have to do so that I don't have to come back and clean up garbage. That sounds like not a fun time at all. And so I went home, and when I got home, my mom said that my friend Michael called and asked if I wanted to go see a movie tonight with him and his family. And the movie they were going to go see was like a movie I've been wanting to watch, and and I didn't, I, I was sure I was going to get something spoiled for me if I didn't see it soon, but I wasn't sure when I was going to get to see it, and so... Yeah, I, I really, really wanted to go see this movie. And so I asked my mom, I was like, Mom, can can I go? And she said, Well, you know, you've you've got to clean your room tonight. And I was like, Well, what if I what if I clean my room really, really fast? And she said, Well, yeah, you know, if you clean your room and you and you do a good job and, and you're finished by four thirty, you you'd have time to go. And so I was like, Okay, thanks, Mom. And I ran up to my room and I just cleaned everything. I cleaned so fast and I cleaned so good and you know, I didn't do any of the Sneaky tricks like shoving stuff under the bed or, or into the closet or anything like that because, you know, that's, well, that's wrong, but also it does not work on my mom at all. And so I cleaned up my room so fast and, and I got it all done just in time, just in time so that I could go see the movie with my friend. And his family came to pick me up and on my way to the theater, we drove by my school and I could see that there were some people who were already cleaning the playground area. And I started thinking about this thing, you know, it's like, I told him I couldn't go because I had to clean my room and I did and, and I felt like, I don't know, I felt good about that, right? You know, it was like, oh good, I've got a good excuse to not go do this good thing. This thing, you know, helping out my school and cleaning up trash. I felt like I had not done anything wrong because I had a good excuse. But when that excuse became like an obstacle between me and something that I actually, you know, really wanted to do, I found a way, right? Like I cleaned my room really, really fast. And I, I definitely would not have worked that hard just so I could go pick up trash, even though that would have been a really good thing for me to do. And I know I know, I do this sort of thing all the time. I think, I think we all do, and it's not good. You know, in the book of Luke, Jesus kind of reiterated something in the Old Testament where it says that you should love your neighbor as yourself. And there was a man who was, you know, listening to Jesus, and he asked him, I think he was a teacher of the law, like a lawyer kind of person, and he asked Jesus, he said, who is my neighbor? Right. And so he's like trying to find a good excuse to not love his neighbor. He's like, OK, so who who's my neighbor? Who do I not have to love? And Jesus told this parable called the parable of the Good Samaritan. And you've probably heard that expression before, Good Samaritan. And these days we kind of take it to mean like like a good Samaritan is a good person. Right. Sometimes people even just call it a Samaritan. They're like, oh, wow, what a Samaritan. But Samaritan doesn't mean like good person per se, like the Samaritans were people that the Israelites did not like. And, and the, the Samaritans did not like the Israelites either. They were the enemies, pretty much, of Israel. Partly because they had, like, a common ancestry, but they, they disagreed about how and where they should worship God. And so the Samaritans and the Israelites did not get along at all. And so in the parable of the Good Samaritan, Jesus talked about this man who was going on a journey, and this was an Israelite. And and he got beat up. He got robbed and, and left pretty much for dead. 
And Jesus said that a, that a priest came along and he saw this man who was, you know, broken and bleeding and he really, really needed help. And the priest did not help him. He just walked on by. Now, the priests, they, they probably had lots of really important jobs. And there were even things where, you know, priests had to stay, like, clean in order to do their jobs, like ceremonially clean. So if he helped this man, he might have to, you know, wash before he could he could do his job at the temple, which was a really, you know, genuinely important job. And so instead of helping the man, he, he walked on by. And then after him came a Levite. Now, the priest was also a Levite. Not all Levites were priests, but all priests are Levites, if that makes sense. The Levites were the people that God had chosen to take care of the temple and do all the, all the stuff that was necessary to, you know, run the temple. So there were the priests who had some really, really important jobs, but there were also lots and lots of other jobs that had to be done, and, and other Levites did those jobs. So this was a person who maybe wasn't quite as important as the priest, but like religiously speaking, he was still a, a really, you know, stand-up guy. But he too, he walked on by. He did not help the man who was robbed and beaten and, and needed help. But then third came a Samaritan. And when Jesus was telling this story to, you know, a bunch of Israelites, when they hear the Samaritan, I could kind of just, you know, picture all of them being like, ugh, Samaritan, gross. But the Samaritan, he came along and he saw this man who was in need. And I think he could tell that it was an Israelite, but he helped him. He put him on his donkey and he bandaged his wounds and he took him to an inn so that he could get some more help and some more care. And he spent a lot of money and a lot of time trying to help this man get better. And so when Jesus finished the story, you know, to answer this man's question about who is my neighbor, Jesus asked, who was the neighbor to this man, right? And, and it was the Samaritan, someone who was his enemy. Now, all of these, all of these people, these three people who, who found this man who got beat up, they all had, I would say, good excuses to not help him. But the truth is, I say, I say they had good excuses, but there really is not a good excuse to not do what God wants you to do. You know, the priest and the Levite, they had, they had important jobs. You know, they had jobs at the temple. They had good religious jobs. They were working for God. They couldn't, they couldn't you know, stop and help this man. They had, they had very important kingdom work to do. I think we do that sometimes also. Sometimes we mask, you know, our own preferences with, you know, religious sounding stuff. And that's no good at all. And the Samaritan, man, he had lots of good excuses. You know, this, this guy who got beat up, he probably hated Samaritans. You know, there are a lot of people these days who feel like it's fine to hate certain people because they're convinced and they've been told that, that those people hate them. And maybe they do hate them. Maybe that Israelite who got beat up hated the Samaritan the whole time. We don't know. But it doesn't mean that he didn't need help. And the Samaritan saw that he needed help and he helped him. And, you know, sometimes when we're making excuses, we're like, well, I've got to do something else, you know. I, I don't want to do this thing, but I can't anyway because I've got something else I've got to do. You know, me being like, oh, I've got to clean my room. Or or there might be someone who'd be like, oh, well, I can't really help that person because I'm on my way to church and I don't want to be late. Right? Like we try to excuse ourselves by saying that we've got something something more important to do or even just, you know, more pressing. Like it's got to be done now and so i got to do this thing and so I can't do that thing. But sometimes also, like we make excuses, like, like maybe instead of saying, oh, I've got to clean my room, I could say, oh, well, you don't want me to come clean up. I, I just, I would just make things worse. Like, no, these are, these are lame excuses. And you know, Moses, Moses kind of did this where, you know, when he saw the burning bush and God was talking to him and, and God was saying that he was going to send him to go talk to Pharaoh to, to free his people, you know, free his people from slavery. Moses was like, Oh, don't, don't send me, you know, I, I'm not really good at talking. I've never been good at talking. I, I didn't used to be good at talking. I'm not good at talking now. And I, and I don't think I'm ever going to be good at talking. And God got, God got really mad at him. And the truth is that it's not that difficult to find excuses that we, you know, think make sense, right? Sometimes we come up with excuses that just don't make any sense at all. And they're, they're really lame, but, but they, you know, they, they really work for us at least, you know, they, they convince us we're good at lying to ourselves. But if God wants you to do something, if, if you should do something, do it. Don't make excuses. Especially if God himself has called you to do something, you better do it. So yeah, my challenge to you guys today is that, is that you would not make excuses. Don't try to excuse yourself from doing what is right. Just do it. Sometimes we spend as much creative energy trying to get out of doing something as we, as we would doing the thing. 
right? And and you and I are pretty capable of overcoming obstacles, right? If you know if there's an obstacle between you and you know doing what you ought to do, figure it out. You know the good Samaritan, he had a big old obstacle between him and helping this Israelite. You know they, their their peoples hated each other, but he was like, you know what? I'm gonna make it work. If God has called you to do something like love your neighbor, just do it. Don't make excuses. Hey guys, I hope you like this video. And yeah, I I am I I feel like I'm a pro at making excuses, and I think we really all are. And we we kind of use them to justify ourselves, you know, feel like like we're good people because yeah, maybe I didn't do that thing, but but I I couldn't, right? But you really can. Just about every time you can. There might be a time here and there where it's like, no, I really just genuinely can't do this good thing. But I think those are pretty few and far between. So yeah, if you see something good that you can do, do it. Don't make excuses.